So I want to thank Chris for his presentation because it leads right into mine. Uh, I know it's something that uh, the, the B-Sides group was kind of jazzed about stacking the two together, having a you know an intro to end map and then follow up with writing and map scripts. Sean made the comment to me last night. He said, you know, uh, typical end map talk, and I've done this a couple times myself. Hey, Nmap has a scripting engine. It's great. It's fabulous. It's flexible. We don't have time to talk about it. We're moving on. So I decided um, to try and uh, address that a little bit. All right. Uh, my name is Jason Wood. I am the owner and founder of Paladin Security, uh, where I do penetration testing and security consulting and working on training right now. I actually am also a uh, red team member at a very large bank that uh, is, allows me to do my own thing with the condition that I never mention their name. So they're really pretty strict on, on what our employees are allowed to do, so I respect that so they, I can keep doing what I would like. Um, and I work as a Cyber Patriot mentor. If you hear me, have heard me talk before, I usually bring this up every time. Cyber Patriot is a Air Force Association sponsored program to teach middle school and high school kids, and even now they're pushing it down to elementary school, computer security, how to, they get basically a busted VM with backdoors on it or badly configured security. It's got a score bot on it, and they form up in the teams and they compete nationally each, against each other. Um, I think it's a great program, uh, just as a way of, of, well, a couple things. I mean, one, you get kind of exciting yeah, working with these kids because they get excited and you feed off of that. And two, it's just a nice way to give back, I think, and, and uh, teach some of the, the, the upcoming folks moving into our community. Um, any scripts that I mention in this talk that I've done, which are not a ton, are going to be up on my GitHub account as well as the slides. So if you want to pull those down, uh, you're welcome to it. I just did a sync of the slides this morning, so they're they're up to date. So the Nmap scripting engine, uh, like Chris said, started out Nmap was a port scanner. That's, that's what it did. And they ran into the idea, some issues though. They wanted to do some more flexible testing and they couldn't do it. They couldn't share information between um, different network checks and stuff like that very well. And this was a problem that they wanted to, to address. And they didn't want to get into the situation of they were the sole source or place where somebody could come up with a check of some sort. Um, which if they had you know, not done the scripting engine, they, all the stuff would be coded in C or C++. And I don't know about you all, I've done a little bit of C, but don't trust me to do you know, anything of, a, of any importance. Um, whereas the scripting language is within my, my grasp. Uh, so we provided them that flexibility and they, it allowed them to put that capability out into everybody's hands. They don't have to write all of the checks, they can just have people submit them and, um, and then add them to the project's repository. Like Chris said, they, uh, the scripting engine runs on using Lua as the scripting language. And uh, there's actually a talk, um, you've got Fyodor and a, another gentleman who work on the MAP, who uh, also works on the MAP project. They were talking about some of the reasons why they decided to go down the route of using Lua. Uh, one, they didn't want to run into a situation where because they were coding this stuff in C or C++, where they were gonna start dealing with buffer overflows or whatnot. They didn't want to introduce security vulnerabilities into the into the, uh, to the application. And two, they looked at it and it's like, okay, well that means we want to do a scripting language. Do we roll our own scripting language or do we use something that already exists? And so they looked around at a few different languages. They wanted something that was going to be easy, pretty easy to embed uh, into the application. And um, and that was fairly mature and well documented. And so they selected Lua for that. And uh, so it's been around for quite a while, I believe since 1993. And as it sits right now, as of 
um, yesterday, I believe, when I checked, there are 558 scripts available. Uh, when they originally, you know, you go back a few years, there was 150 or so. So it's starting to grow a little bit faster. It definitely has the ability, because of the flexibility built into this, to almost be like a vulnerability scanner, something like a command line Nessus. Um, but, you know, there's some differences there, right? Uh, Nessus is written by a company that puts a lot of money into paying people to write plugins to look for issues and map, you know, is primarily devoted towards uh, network scanning and they certainly don't have that type of uh, organization set up to pay people to write checks. So uh, it's, it doesn't have anything close to that, that level of features. But that doesn't mean that we can't add specific things that we want to look for. So why are we going to write an NSC script? What's our benefit? Well, one of the first things that got me thinking about this a little bit, because uh, what I would typically do is I used Nmap all the time. I'd crack the thing open, you know, crack open some of the scripts to see, okay, what does this script do? Does it apply to a penetration test I'm working on? Or, gee, this just sounds interesting. What are they doing here? Um, but what got me interested in this more was in doing penetration tests, part of what we do is we provide the results back to our clients and say, hey, here's the problem we found. Here's how you can confirm that this is in your environment and you can use this to check and see um, once you fix things whether or not things are, are, have been applied correctly. And I thought, wouldn't it be neat to be able to provide at least some of that um, those checks, the, the, uh, that testing mechanism, in something like an NSC script to a client. Just say, hey, here's how you run the command, run it against the script, aim it at this asset or assets, and there you go. You can validate it inside your environment. So that was what got me interested in this. If you work inside of a, a company as a security engineer, so you're not out uh, hitting different companies or clients like I do. Um, one of the things I had thought of as a security engineer was similar to that when I was working at full time at a place was I sure would like to get some security testing into my developer's hand or QA group's hands. So wouldn't it be nice if I came up with, hey, we've got this flaw in this application. QA is primarily responsible for determining whether or not the flaw has been fixed or not. Wouldn't it be nice to give them a script that would handle this. And so, okay, here's another use case for, for using NSC. Now, I could do that in Python or Ruby or what have you, but, um, you know, here's a framework ready to go. And there are others that you can come up with, uh, obviously. You know, you've found some kind of issue. Let's say you're doing some security research and you, you want to release checks for that out to the public. You could write up an NSC script about what you found, how to detect it, and then send it over to the Nmap project. They accepted it, it gets you know, put into the repository, and now folks can scan for that across their environment. Um, so like one of the things that you see inside the list of scripts is Shellshock. And when that came out, everybody was scanning everything, looking to see where they could find that, because it was turning up in all kinds of odd and unusual places. So, that's a little bit about NSC and the background on it. But before we start looking at writing any type of script, let's take a look at the Lua scripting language itself. I saw a couple of hands when Chris asked who had developed uh, scripts for World of Warcraft. Um, has anybody written any scripts in Lua previously that's here? A couple people, so just a few folks. Okay, so you're gonna look at this and go, well, duh, because this is gonna be really simple syntax, you know, common stuff that we're going to use, but we're going to go talk about that real quick. Uh, get a feel for what the syntax looks like. Uh, like I said, Lua was first released in 93. Uh, it's a very lightweight uh, scripting language. It's easy to embed it into other applications. They've built it that way, and it's really well documented. Um, Wireshark uses it as part of their project, and um, so, you can, and video, it's pretty big in the video game realm as well. So let's just start off with some basics. You know, we're gonna need to, if we're writing code, we need to write comments. What the heck were you thinking when you were trying to do this, right? 
Um, there's the, the, the way of doing a comment is just two dashes in front of it and then whatever comes afterwards you can put down there, it's no big deal. If there's a little bit of a convention for multi-line comments. So you'll see three dashes and then two dashes for everything else and then they wrap up with three dashes to kind of signify and I'm done. Um, not a big deal, um, but uh, you know, I tend to default to the uh, pound sign and uh, that's not the case here. Assignment is really simple. Z equals some value, right? Uh, you're not declaring that, oh, this is going to be a string or this is going to be an integer or anything like that. One thing that I thought was kind of interesting um, in assignment is I can declare three variables and then give it two values. And the way that works out, if I was to, you know, do A comma B comma C equals zero comma one, and then I print A comma B comma C, it's going to be the first uh, value on the right gets assigned to the first variable on the left. The second one gets assigned to the second variable on the left. The third variable just just gets given uh, a nil. You know, it's we you declared that this variable exists. You can use it later, but it doesn't have anything in it. So you can uh, do this kind of multi-line declaration. Which when I first saw this in a, in some examples, really. Like, wait, what the heck is going on here? Because this doesn't match. We've got the concept of global variables as well as local variables. Um, and I've got a little bit of a typo here, but global variables are just that. You declare it once that you can use it anywhere, right? Uh, just like with any programming language, though we want to be careful where we put our we use global variables. Some places that makes sense, but for the most part we want to use local variables. Local variables are good, scoped to the block of code that they're defined in. So if I write a function and then I have declare a local variable inside of that function, it's good inside of that function. It's not good outside of that function at all. So um, if I declared foobar inside of a function, I can't call it once I've exited it. And I'm in some other bit of code. Now if you're looking at this code, it's, if you've done any scripting, this should be fairly readable, right? It's not like Python that gets really strict about your white spaces, but it's not like C or Java where you have to terminate every line with a semicolon. Um, so in this case, we're just declaring a function you know, called attack some host. And because this is for uh, an nmap check, we've got to give it the host and the port that this applies to. And then we declare some variable in here, which I have generically just called an attack. We do some stuff. And then when we're done with the function, we do a return to send back the data to whatever called this thing. Um, and then we just use end to mark the end of our function. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. No curly brackets or anything like that to, to wrap around our functions. All right, tables. This is something that I'm still struggling with, I'll be honest with you. you know, writing this, coming up with this talk was driven off of my interest in learning how to write NSC scripts. So one of the things I'm still grappling with is that inside of Lua, if every type of data structure is a table, well, I, don't want, a, I want an array. That's fine, you can declare an array, just like this, A equals curly brackets, right, and then you populate it, but that array is inside of a table. Well, I wanna do linked lists, like I can do in C or C++. That's fine, it's inside of a table. Um, so, this is something that, you, it takes some, some getting used to, I'm still getting used to it. Um, matrices, multi-dimensional arrays, or several others that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Um, but that's something you're going to want to focus on and look at the documentation on. Uh, to be honest with you, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll crack open other NSC scripts to see how they did it. You know, try and find something kind of similar and, and uh, use what they're, they're demonstrating. Okay. If, you know, if then statements. 
If some condition, then go do something else. We wrap it up with an end. And then if we are doing multiple conditions, we've got if something rather than do this, else if this other thing, do something entirely different. And then you know, we've got our default case here. We didn't match anything, so we're going to just toss an error. Um, so pretty easy to work your way through there. For loops are the same kind of thing. Now this is kind of an interesting um, for loop. Uh, I wanted to point something out here. We're going to do a for loop over um, pairs of this response.cookies. So we've, got on a, we've done an HTTP request. We've gotten a response back. We're extracting the cookies out of it. We may have more than one cookie. We probably have more than one cookie. And we want to print out what that value is. This data, when you run it in pairs, is going to come out with the index and then the value. Well, I don't care about the index. I'm not going to use that. Lou's answer to that is, fine, just use an underscore. So underscore comma cookies, which basically is kind of like tosses it out into the trash over here. Yes, we've syntactically made the correct call, but I don't care about the indexes. Just give me my data. Um, which is not something I have really run into much before, so um, that caught my attention. Uh, you can go ahead and do you know, the process of saying, you know, if this, uh, or excuse me, like a, for this condition and it is true, you know, some, some value is less than 10 or whatever it is, loop until, you know, it's no longer less than 10. Um, in this case, though, I just went and used one of their, their built-in functions here for pairs. While loops are pretty much the same thing. While a, uh, you know, we declare our, our uh, iterator uh, variable. While a in, uh, has a, some element of i, do whatever. In this case, we're just going to print out that element inside of the array, and then we'll increment the, uh, the iterator variable, and then when we're done, we just mark it as end. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I didn't look at that. I ran into it once, and I thought about it, and I didn't, didn't really look it up and follow up. That's a good question. Um, so yeah, I have to check. And by the way, if you guys do have any questions throughout this, please feel free to fire away in the middle of it. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Okay, so that's just some basic NS, or Lua syntax. Uh, my colon covering that quickly was just so that as we're going through things, you can kind of see, you know, have a, some foundation on what we're uh, what you're looking at. Okay, every NSC script has three components to it. You've got the head, the rule, and then the action. And I've done this useless looking example up here that actually doesn't work because it's, I'm not doing anything. Um, but we start off with the head. This is where we're going to do our imports. We want to import this particular library. Uh, we want to give our description of it. Uh, what is it that this NSE, NSE script is trying to accomplish? Uh, that's actually picked up by the NSE docs uh, engine and uh, used for documentation. Uh, we're going to take a look at categories here in a moment, but one of the things that Nmap does is it has this concept of categories that a, and it can be more than one. I could have, this is safe and um, default, there you go. Safe and the default category. And what that tells Nmap is, hey, we've just enabled all of the scripts and this script happens to apply and it's safe, so we're not gonna crash anything, so awesome. Go ahead and run it. Uh, if it's intrusive or a denial of service or a brute force or something like that, 
Nmap is not going to run that automatically because the last thing it wants to do is have somebody, they want to do is have somebody turn this thing loose on their environment and then crash their web farm or whatever all at once. You know, it would make for a pretty miserable day. Um, then we get into the rule. Uh, the rule is basically what condition are we matching that we're going to actually do the action. So a quick, um, easy way of doing this is uh, they've got a library called short port. Instead of notating, uh, and I've got an example later, um, yeah, the port is 110, let's say, for pop three, and it's got, uh, the port is open, and we've got some or other value, you know, characteristic that we're looking at. In this case, uh, we can just simply declare it, hey, we've got a well-known protocol, in this case, HTTP, short port dot HTTP. If that's true, port rule matches, we move on to the action. If there wasn't a web server on this thing, it wasn't on port 80, it didn't match HTTP or what have you, or any of the other common web ports, then it's going to just ignore the rest of the actions. It doesn't apply. And then finally we get into the action and we send the host and the port number that we're interested in, potentially some more information, and we go do stuff. And then return that result back to um, Nmap to give us the, the output. All right, here are all of the different categories at this point. Um, you can see the dangerous ones up here, right? Brute, brute force, denial of service, exploit, intrusive. Uh, malware usually refers to checking for the presence of malware on a system, so it's not infecting it with malware. Um, it's a safe script. Uh, we're checking for a vulnerability, what have you buzzer, so we're going to throw a bunch of crap at this thing to see how it responds, right? Um, you just want to make sure as you're writing your scripts to put the category in there, that's one of the requirements, we've got to have that, and make sure it's appropriate to what it is you're doing. If you're doing something that's uh, testing for SQL injection on a web form in this application, then I would put that as intrusive, right? This is not a safe necessarily a safe script. We could have bad things happen, potentially. Um, but, if all I'm doing is a banner grab, well, that's, that's safe enough. Okay, the other thing that we have to remember is Nmap is a port scanner. So, everything it does goes back to a port. Um, so, in this case, um, or the previous example here, you know, with the short port .http, it's going to be port 80 or 443 or 8080, something like that, right? It's finding a web server. It's found an open port. It's associated with that service. And therefore, the checks that we're going to do are actually going to apply to this thing. And then we'll go ahead and run them. And this is a quick script that actually that I had written. We'll, we'll take a look at here in a bit. Um, that all it does is grab the cookie value. It hits a web page and says, hey, what well, cookies got sent to me? And grabs those. Now, why did I want to do that? Well, because I wanted to, honestly, I just wanted to get, be able to get the cookies so that I could then do an authentication attempt and use those cookies to do something else as an authenticated user in the application. And I needed to start out by figuring out how the heck do I get cookies in the first place, right? But it all ties back to yeah, to some service. So if you're familiar with Nmap results, port, state, service, ADTCP, open HTTP, that looks very familiar. And then the four lines below, that's the script. Any questions? Can you override? So if the service is on a non-standard port and the check port failed, so it doesn't know what state it's in. Port. Okay, so there's, the answer is gonna be kinda, it depends. If the port rule is written in a way that 
I want to look at 8443 and 8080 or something like that. Nope, it didn't match. I'm not going to look at it. If I'm doing like shortport.http, which is doing some service recognition and the whole bit, and I have service uh, verification or, or validation occurring on this, and it says, hey, that's an HTTP server. Now, sure, it's on some stupid port like 25,034, but I still recognize it as an HTTP server, so now it applies. Does that make sense? Good question, I like it. Any others? No? Okay. All right, there are already 128 libraries specifically written for NSC that are available to us. Um, I grabbed some of the more common ones that I thought, hey, this might be useful on a more regular basis to display up here. We're going to be dealing with files, potentially. So we've got the data files library. We're going to be dealing with brute force attacks. There's a library for brute force. Um, hey, I'm in a Windows environment, and so we want to do a lot of stuff with SMB. There's a full library written for that. And there's a whole bunch of scripts written for that as well um, that are geared up specifically at SMB checks. Uh, a guy I know named Ron Bowes actually wrote most of those, and he spent a bunch of time researching and figuring out uh, how to query or send, you know, request to the SMB service and get a response back in some way that makes sense. Uh, it was kind of funny, we were talking about this, um, I think at DerbyCon last year, the year before, and he made the comment, he says, yeah, if I was to have to do that again, I'd have to relearn a whole bunch of stuff. Like any scripting language, it's a kind of use it or lose it type of proposition, right? So, we, you know, you, you want to work with this stuff and, and keep going. Some of the common ones that we are going to use, though, across all scripts that are useful, we've got, I've kind of bolded here, the, the nmap library, the NSE debug, short port, STD dot, STD NSE. Uh, these are, you know, just some, some kind of standard um, libraries to aid us in our scripting. Um, Oh, one interesting one I wanted to point out here is you got the, the UN PWD database, username and password database. If you're doing a brute force attack, they actually have a password database functionality built into it already. So you can just call that and use that instead. So that's, that's potentially handy. We've already seen this in the, in the head uh, of the NSC scripts. This is where we're going to do our imports, typically. We can do them later, but by convention, we do them all up front. So in this case, we're calling, you know, HTTP, short port, and STD, uh, standard NSE. All right, next up is the port rules. Um, now, we, you've seen the easy way, right? Short port dot HTTP. Fabulous, that's, that's nice and easy to remember. Okay, here's a more complex one. So instead, we're going to say, okay, the port rule is now a function, and the auth port, we're going to you know, validate this. It's going to be on port 113. We're looking at ident, uh, ident T, ident D. Can't talk. Uh, so the port is uh, 113. It's on TCP. Um, we get the state of all of that. Is the port open? Um, is it the ident identity service? Is that open? And is the port, the TCP port open um, to do the port rule? We can get more complex. So this is where you kind of, going back to what you were talking about, is where we can give ourselves a lot of room or write ourselves into a corner. Um, but nothing else will happen if this doesn't match, this doesn't come back true that, yep, we match all of these conditions, then the action never actually runs. This is, like I said, this is the shorter way of doing it. If you have different services, just look at the, the NSE docs and, and uh, see what you have available to you. Okay, now we're getting to the part where I'm decided to try and be a little gutsy, and we're going to just open up and terminal and a text editor 
and I've got my cheat sheet on the side, so if I get stuck, um, I'll have somewhere to go. All right. Okay. Is that readable back there at all? I didn't think so. There we go. How are we doing? All right. And if I start getting things too low on the screen and I need to raise things up, let me know. So I'll do that too. Um, and I'll do the same thing here. Okay, that good too on the terminal? Okay. All right, so let's try and write some NMAP scripts here. There you go. So Chris mentioned that he had the most worthless NMAP script or NSC script possible. I'm actually going to make one that's more useless than that. Because it is actually did tell you that there was a port there. And that is potentially useful, even though Nmap would have already said that anyhow. Um, so let's start off. The first thing that we need is, is going to be the head. Then we're going to have the rule. And then the action. So let's set that up. So the first thing that we're going to need is our description of what it is, this is. So it's, you ever notice when you get up in front of a group of people you can't type anymore? All right, and we'll say, uh, obligatory, hello world, Sort of. What's that? Oh. That does change the meaning a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> However, you could argue that that might apply. Um, particularly if the demo gods decide that they don't like me very much. Um, there are other things you can put in here. You can say, you know, just for informational purposes, I can say, hey, the author is... Me. Um, but we do, that's not, you know, we don't have to have that. We do need the categories. Smell that right? Yes. Okay. This is going to be safe because all we're doing is hello world, so this isn't particularly dangerous. Fabulous. And then we're going to have our port rule. Okay, now I've got a web server that we're going to hit this with. And because I'm using short port, I need to go back up here to the top and say, oops, 
local short port because we're just limiting this to this particular script. So this, we're declaring it for this block of code. Short port is equal to require fabulous. Uh, author, oh yeah, that was supposed to be an assignment. Thank you. That would have exploded in my face in just a moment, which I guarantee I'm going to do a couple of times while we're up here. All right, so now we've got the head completed, we've got the port rule set up, the action is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna say action is a, oops, is equal to a function. We're going to send it the host and the port. And local, I'll call some variable called um, hi there is equal to hello everyone. And then we're going to return. Hi there, we've got to send that back to the scanning engine. And then we end it. Then we've got to save this. And I don't want to save it to that directory. Go there. So this is the problem about having this out there. Okay. Um, World.nsc and save it. Switch over to our command line. So we'll cd over to All right, here's our NSE script. And my web server, let me double check and make sure I have the right IP address. Perfect. So I have a web VM running here just with a website on it. You don't have to. Uh, I, I'm doing it in this case because this is outside of the uh, standard install location. If I copy this file to user local share and map scripts, then I wouldn't have to. I could run nmap from anywhere and it would just know, go look here for my scripts. Because this is a custom written script and I've got to say somewhere on the file system, um, I either have to specify the path to it or I have to run it from that directory. So, and so we'll do nmap. Um, we're not going to try and enumerate all the ports in the world on this thing. Port 80 dash dash script, because we don't want one particular script, and it's called hello world. You don't uh, typically call it with a dot NSE on the end of it. Um, in this case, I did autocomplete, so I tried to add it in. And then our IP address is 172.16.164. Five dot one forty two. Okay, and just for grins, we're going to add the dash d to our command, which is debug, because you're going to want this. This one I think we're pretty safe on, but as I'm writing things, um, you, know, you get syntax errors and crap like that. All of a sudden, without running the dash d, it just explodes and says, "Nope, didn't work." Add this, now you find out what the syntax error was. Okay, it actually worked. So we get a whole lot of spew from, from nmap. Let's get rid of that dash D. Okay, and so we've got our results. Yeehaw, I did a script, and it worked. Fortunately, with some help from my, uh, my editor peer review out here, exactly. Um, but... Sure enough, I'm running a web server, just like I said I was, right? And because we found that, we matched the rule, and then it dumped out, hi there, or hello, everyone. 
Notice that I didn't really specify anything other than just, uh, I didn't format this at all, right? I just said return the text back, and math did what it did. It said, hey, this came from the hello world and a C script, and there's your results. Have fun, okay? All right, so that's kind of cool, but, you know, not particularly exciting. So let's switch back, and then we'll do a new script. We're going to make this one a little bit more involved. Okay. So we've got, I'm going to use short port again because I am a lazy bum. And I don't want to make things harder for me than I have to. Now we're going to actually talk with the HTTP service. We're going to get something back from it and look at the results. Uh, so we need to import the HTTP library. Oops, require HTTP. And I'm going to do some stuff with the standard NSC library. So we'll add that here. Okay, so we started off our head, give it a description. What we're going to do with this script is we're going to just get the cookie values back from the site. Okay? Now, another part of the, anytime we're going to do it, uh, uh, a script that we might distribute to other people uh, is it's kind of helpful to have some kind of guidance here on what we're supposed to do, right? A little bit of help on on how we're going to run this. So we're going to add a comment in here, and this feeds into the NSC docs as well. We'll give the usage at usage, and then and map our target. And dash dash script, and we'll call this script get cookie. And then just as an example of what should come out, we have our example output that they can expect. We'll see something like TCP, oops, 80 dash TCP, open HTTP. TP, and then it'll be get cookie, all right, so there's our usage, all right? So we've now done a little documentation. We've got to add our categories. And this is going to be equal to, so what do you guys think? We're going to hit a website and grab some cookies. Safe, dangerous, intrusive, safe. Yeah, we're not doing anything unusual. So we'll go ahead and call this safe. Safe with an F. Are you guys able to read this down here at the bottom? I know I'm down there. Okay. All right. And then our port rule. We've finished the head. Port rule, short port, dot HTTP, and move on to the action. Action is to function. We're going to have a host, a port. We start indenting just for convention. So we're going to do our local variable of a response. Uh, and it's going to equal whatever we get back from our web server. So we're going to do http.get. Now if I was doing a post request, it would be http.post. So that's pretty 
straightforward, but since we're just hitting the main page, we don't really have to worry about anything here. Um, and then we're going to get the host port, and we need the path, which I didn't declare. So I'm going to go back up here ahead of that. I'll just say uh, path is equal to, we're just going to get the root uh, of the web server. Okay? And then so we've got our response back. Now we're going to start looking for cookies. Local cookie jar is equal to, I'm just going to declare this to cookie jar as an array which is actually a table, as it turns out. And then you'll probably, this looks familiar, for underscore comma cookie, because all we're interested in are the cookies themselves. And pairs, pairs, like I said, iterates over every element in an array, pulls out the index and the value assigned to that. So it's just an automatic iterator. Um, and then we'll do, oops, pairs. And we want inside the response, we want the cookies. And then we're going to go do something. We'll work with our table, insert into our table called cookie jar. And we'll do cookie. Name is equal to, okay, we're going to kind of go off the screen here a little bit, so we'll mess with this. Um, Cookie.name is equal to, now to do string concatenation in Lua, a lot of other languages we do, you know, plus sign or something like that. Lua, we just use two dots. So just a little difference there. So dot, dot, and then cookie.name. And I want also the uh, value of the cookie. Value is equal to cookie.value. And for now, we'll just call that good. I've ran off the end of the screen. End our for loop. And then we're going to return our results using the standard NSC library. Okay, so whatever's in the cookie jar is going to get sent back uh, to scripting engine and we'll wrap up our script. And theoretically, Theoretically, when we run this, we'll get our script values back, or cookie values back. So the script is going to be, we're just going to use the same syntax. nmap minus p80 script instead of hello world is going to be get dash cookie. I'll send our debug flag because there's lots of opportunity for me to have screwed up. Yeah, I got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's clear it and we'll run it again here with things simplified. So I ran it against this website. It's a WordPress install that I mess around with. So we get the PHP session ID. Here's its value. I could also pull out the path and all that other stuff that you would need to send back to the app for you know, subsequent requests. Um, but there you go, that's a, 
we've, we've managed to start pulling out our cookies. Well, what are we going to do from here? Well, we've got five minutes left, so not a whole lot. Um, I'll show you what I'm looking at doing. And back over here. Just do it this way. Come on. All right, it's not like me. Please don't save. We'll just do it this way. All right, so this is pretty much legible. Um, so this is the script that I'm working on and I was hoping to have done and I didn't get it done. So uh, I'll run it just to show you what it looks like with what I have available. So I've got all of my imports up here. The description of this script is, hey, I want to provide it credentials. I want to target a WordPress site and I want it to log in and tell me is WordPress up to date or not, right? And uh, as you can imagine, that's something kind of important to keep your finger on if you're running WordPress sites the moment you're out of date. We have a massive worm, you know, running around trying to exploit that. We've got all of our output. What I'm hoping to do is, hey, here's the current version released on WordPress.org, and here's our installed version. Specifying license, categories that should be safe. Um, the thing that I wanted to point out in that this is actually this line right here. This took me by surprise a little bit. Lua does not have regular, a regular expression engine. In fact, uh, when I was reading the Lua documentation, they said, well, we could put a Lua, but we could do a regular expression engine, but it's going to double the code base of Lua to do it, and we don't want to do that. So they've got this pattern matching library that they use. And so in this case, um, I, the line before, I've declared a variable called WP response, meaning I'm hitting WordPress.org, do my get request. This time I was interested in the download page itself, so my path was slash download. And then I was extracting out the version by doing a string match inside of that body for something that has a download, ampersand space, WordPress, ampersand, and then three digits after that. And I'm putting it inside the parentheses. I'm telling uh, Lua, these are the values I want you to capture and toss into this variable, okay? Which is like our regular expressions, right? Whatever we're grabbing in those parentheses is what we're going to manipulate on later. Okay, and then it goes out and it makes the request. Now, I would, I'm working on my check here against this development site, so I would be logging in with uh, a super secret password called password. Um, this is basically the post body. And the goal is I would go in there and hit the updates page, match on what's there, and then give some comparison. Well, it doesn't work quite right yet, but let's go ahead and it should work at least enough. All right, that part of it worked. So we've gone out, sure enough, we have a web server. Because of that, the script fired, now it didn't do any validation to see that literally was a WordPress site, right? So I'll need to beef that up. But it did hit WordPress.org and the current version is 4.7.3. Now I have something to compare on and I can continue on to write my check from there. So really simple. Uh, my goal in this was just to you know, kind of open up this, you know, the, the, the NSC scripting world a little bit for everybody. It's, um, it's not as bad as it first looks. You open up some of these files and you start getting kind of intimidated by the, you know, what they're doing and oh my gosh, I'll never be able to do this. And it's really not that bad. And I was doing some looking at the 500 plus scripts and I did some word counts on all the lines in it. I would say probably around 50% or more of the NSC scripts that are released as part of NMAP are 
about 150 to 175 lines in length. And that's going to include things like the description and the usage and all that other stuff. So it's really not that bad. We can do some useful stuff in a pretty short, short amount of code. We don't have to worry about managing thousands of lines of code. Now there are some that I saw that were 1,500 some odd lines. That's way out there beyond me and will be for quite some time. So I hope this was interesting to you guys. Um, any questions on what we've done? Yeah. Um, I don't know, but to be honest with you, I haven't hit that point. I suspect, though, it's going to be a, you tell it what to do, it runs, and it, it's done. Um, I can give it a list of, what's that? Yes. And, which does lead to some issues, right? If I'm going to specify um, a use, some kind of credentials, um, do I want that in my bash history file? Probably not. So put it in some kind of data file, right, and have my plugin know to look for an argument that says, hey, your username file is here, or your credential file is here. You could even tie this into a, some of my brute force type of deal, right? Here are the five or six credentials that we use across whatever this is. Have fun, you figure out which one was the right one, and just give me the results when you're done, right? Um, like I said, Lua is really well documented. You go online, and they've got their programming in Lua book online. Fabulous. You know, that's, that was my reference, right? Um, I didn't have to go out and buy anything. You've got about 50% of the Nmap book online. The NSC ver section is part of that. If you don't have the book, it's worth getting. Um, I have it myself. It's a great, uh, great reference tool. You've got the NSC docs. You're looking at some library. What do I need to do with this thing? What do I need to send it? What do, you know, what's the... They've got all of that documented here. Check out the existing scripts. That is kind of my favorite way of doing things. You know, look, see what else somebody else has done. And obviously you can go back and look at this presentation and some of the scripts. Here's just the GitHub um, URL again. Sir. What's that? Oh, right here, where we were talking about that? Okay, let me we'll handle this and then we'll, we'll dive back. Okay, so some of the documentation I read said in the older versions of WordPress, they output it in a meta tag. So that implied to me that that was not the case anymore. Okay, so yeah, I saw about three different ways to get the current and installed version. Um, one of the one you're referring to said older, so I kind of shied away from it. The question we had uh, earlier, um, actually, before you head out, what was your what was your question again exactly? Right. So his question was, can you make your NSE scripts interactive so that it hits a certain point, it pauses, wait for you to put in input like a username and a password, right, in some way, and then move on. Um, and then the, the comment after that was, uh, well, from my thought, no, you, I don't think you can. I think it's going to just go. And then you can put it in as part of a command line argument. You can put it into text files that it reads in and uses that instead. Uh, so that's, that's how you would have to get around that. So it does require a little bit of forethought. Any other questions? No? Well, thank you everybody for coming out. I hope it was useful and uh, take a shot at it. Thanks.